Good afternoon, evening. Thank you very much for attending this uh, session on sleep and waking, or I'm going to say waking and sleep, because I will probably tell you more about how you're able to stay awake than how you're able to fall asleep. And so the title of my lecture is Neural Circuits and Chemicals in the Brain that Maintain Waking and Generate Sleep. I have to be close to this mic. So, for centuries and centuries, in fact, the first description of sleep wake states can really go back to the Upanishads, an Indian text of 3000 BC or so. People have known that there are both states of waking and sleep, and that in fact, even in sleep, those states can vary somewhat in terms of the mental activity. But it was in the last century that techniques were developed that activity within the brain could be recorded. So first of all, including through, whoops, it's going to be more difficult than I thought, use of the electroencephalogram, electrical activity of the brain, the EEG, an electrooculogram to record the movements of the eyes, and an electromyogram to record the muscle activity, and particularly the muscles of posture that keep you erect and awake. And it was discovered using these techniques, first of all with the EEG, that waking and sleep differ very fundamentally. So waking, during waking, the activity of the cerebral cortex is mostly fast, predominantly fast activity. It varies through the waking state depending on your level of attention, but it is relatively fast. Whereas during sleep, it was found to become progressively more and more slow. So slow wave sleep, as it was called, is characterized by very high amplitude slow waves. But in the 50s, 1950s, in Nathaniel Kleitman's group in Chicago, his resident Azarinsky was to discover that there was another period of sleep that was very different. And he discovered that in his own children because he found that although they were behaviorally asleep, their eyes were moving, and they were moving rapidly. And he called that rapid eye movement sleep, as we know it today, REM sleep. And with Bill DeMent, who went on to study further the EEG activity in both humans and cats with Kleitman, they found that that was associated with fast cortical activity, activity that was similar to that of waking. In other words, a seemingly active brain at the same time that the eyes were moving, but behaviorally, the individual was asleep. And then Michel Jouvet in <clears throat> France, who is actually was my mentor some 50 years ago when I began my career in sleep research, discovered in cats, recording from them, not only the EEG and the EOG, but the EMG, the muscular activity <clears throat> of the postural muscles of the neck, that in fact, not only did the animal appear asleep, but the muscular activity was virtually gone. So there was a muscular atonia in the postural muscles of the body. It was sub subsequently discovered that in fact, indeed, those motor neurons that control movement and control muscle tone were inhibited during that state. So this is the deepest state of sleep for the body. And the arousal threshold by sensory stimuli, there is a very high threshold to arouse and to produce any movement. So the only movement that occurs that can be seen is in the eye muscles, rapid eye movements. And if you have pets, or sometimes it's wives, I guess, to observe in husbands, movements of the periphery, the digits, or the paws of cats and dogs that can also occur uh, during paradoxical sleep. But the postural muscle tone is atonic and gone during that state. So this is a deep state of sleep, but with that depth, the brain is active. And so Jouvet, in France, called this sommeil paradoxal. It's a name that I still use today, paradoxical sleep, along with other colleagues, particularly in animals, whereas in humans, you will only hear it referred to as REM sleep, distinguished from what was called slow wave sleep and is now often called non-REM sleep. So 
In the short time I have, I'm going to pass directly to the experimental work in animals, which has allowed us to determine within the brain which neurons are involved and which chemicals they use to produce these different states. And so this is a recording from a rat, which has become the common animal of study in the laboratory. In fact, mice more recently. And like all mammals, first beginning with birds, but all mammals have three distinct states, as I've described, waking, slow wave sleep, and paradoxical sleep, or REM sleep. And I won't go into details here, but this is the EEG activity from the cortex, which is fast during waking, both active waking or quiet waking, and then with the muscle tone that is high, obviously with active waking, arousal, moving in the animal, as well as standing erect if you're a primate, and then with quiet wake, this tone decreases. Going to sleep, all animals and humans assume a posture that will support, generally, their bodily weight, and thus the muscle tone of the postural muscles decreases during sleep. And then on the cortex, first in a transition and then directly into slow wave sleep, these slow waves appear on the cerebral cortex. That corresponds to a state of rest for the brain. And in fact, metabolism is greatly decreased in the brain during slow wave sleep. One of the functions of sleep probably is rest and restoration during that rest. <clears throat> Proceeding after a given period of slow wave sleep, and in normal animals and individuals, only after that period, this paradoxical state appears. That is to say, the animal behaviorally appears to be still asleep, but the EEG then becomes as active as it is during active waking. It's during that time that also rapid eye movements occur. And then in association, this complete muscle atonia of the postural muscles, an inhibition of movement. So the brain is active, and it was first determined by Dement with Kleitman years ago, and then as a time I described, 50, more than 50 years ago, that dreams were always reported when people were awakened from this state. This is the state in which the most vivid dreams occur, and those dreams can include movements, running, m many activities, without the legs moving, the arms moving, the body moving, because those motor neurons are inhibited. So the brain is engaged in those activities, but they're not expressing them through the motor system. Now, as I say, I have, through my life's research, been studying which neurons, those are the cells in the brain, make up the brain, are important for generating and maintaining each state, starting with waking, and through which circuits or projections do they act upon the cerebral cortex to modulate cortical EEG activity. And then within those neurons, which chemicals, chemical neurotransmitters or modulators, do they utilize for that transmission? Because neurons function transmitting from one cell to another by release of chemicals in the brain. So, as I mentioned, <clears throat> many studies have been done in humans, and my colleagues, Dr. Uh, Julien Doyon, after my lecture, will show you a certain number of studies in which imaging has been used that has enabled us to visualize some of the processes going on during sleep in the human brain. But for experimental recording of not only the surface of the brain, but also neurons within the brain, as well as experimental ma manipulation, these studies have been done in other animals for many years in cats, but most more recently in rats, and now mostly in mice. As you can see, the difference in size of the brain is tremendous. However, there is, fortunately, a similarity of structure. And this has allowed us then to do very in-depth studies in these smaller mammals <coughs> in the laboratory of the systems involved. So this is a schematic diagram of a sagittal section. That means cut through the midline, looking up from the side, where you have a rat brain and the spinal cord here which continues into the brain stem, which goes up into the forebrain, 
the base of the forebrain here, and then the cerebral cortex on the surface. That cerebral cortex, as I said, has grown enormously in humans. The difference in size is just uh, unfathomable. But nonetheless, a similar basic structure that allows us to perform these studies. Now, <clears throat> as I said, first of all, we have spent many years studying the neurons and systems that maintain a waking state. How does the brain stay awake? to produce fast cortical activity and behavioral muscle tone. Oops. Sorry. And early on in the last century, it was believed that, that the brain stays awake simply because of sensory stimulation. For humans during the day, lights, sounds, and all of these things, and then when those cease at night for humans, the brain would go to sleep, the human would go to sleep. This very naive concept was disproven very clearly by complete elimination of sensory input to the brain in animals, which did not at all decrease the amount of waking in the brain. So the brain itself can generate in an autonomous manner waking as well as sleep. On the other hand, what was shown clearly by Maruzzi and Lagoon is that large lesions of this central core of the brain stem, which is this reticular net-like formation in this position, would result in a complete loss of that fast cortical activity on the cortex, and with that, any sensory awareness or responsiveness, and thus, in humans, a loss of consciousness, which, common to these lesions in humans as well as animals, then results in what can be called a coma. So the neurons within the brain stem and the reticular core were shown to be essential for maintaining a waking state. <clears throat> so the projections from those neurons in the brain stem then pass up through relays in the thalamus and the basal forebrain up to the cerebral cortex and thus excite the cerebral cortex in a tonic manner to keep this fast cortical activity going during wakefulness. Most of the neurons within the reticular formation, like the majority of neurons in the brain as well, utilize, contain and utilize the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate. So it's released from one of those neurons to the next relay up to the cortex in those exciting the cerebral cortex as a result. So it's not surprising that many anesthetics, which function then in general anesthesia, associated in humans with a loss of consciousness, loss of responsiveness, act by decreasing or blocking glutamatergic transmission. Now, one of the things we've been able to do in animals is to actually insert electrodes deep into the brain and record from single neurons to see how they're discharging in relationship to cortical activity and sleep-wake states. And most glutamate neurons in the reticular formation discharge then in association with fast cortical activity or cortical activation, which they thus serve to generate. There are other chemicals that are also, we consider more as neuromodulators. They're not as fast in their action. They modulate the activity of other neurons in the brainstem. And those include neurons that contain catecholamines, noradrenaline on the one hand or dopamine. They are also found in the brainstem, in clusters, locus ceruleus, the noradrenaline neurons, ventral tegmentum, the dopamine neurons. And collectively, they give rise to projections into the forebrain. Particularly the noradrenergic neurons, these projections can be very diffuse through the subcortical structures as well as to the entire cerebral cortex. They also send projections downward. So when they discharge and release noradrenaline, can stimulate cortical activation and uh, muscle tone at the same time with movement. So, <clears throat> it was learned also in the last century that drugs which increase the release of acetylcholine, such as the amphetamines, will stimulate prolonged cortical activation with behavioral arousal and waking. And these are used then to maintain wakefulness during the day, amphetamine-like drugs to those people who cannot stay awake, which is a certain uh, disorder for some people, hypersomnia, or to maintain or to enhance uh, wakefulness.
And in this case, recordings of noradrenaline neurons have been done in the brain, and it's found that they discharge during waking with cortical activation and behavioral arousal. So they can stimulate both of those during the waking state, and they are silent during sleep. They turn off completely during sleep. And it's important that they turn off for sleep to occur. Another chemical neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, is also found in neurons within the brain stem and basal forebrain, which project into the forebrain and from the basal forebrain through the cerebral cortex. Acetylcholine can excite neurons in the cortex and can directly stimulate cortical activation. It's been known for a long time that drugs which stimulate cholinergic, the term we refer to as the cholinergic, acetylcholinergic receptors, with the well-known nicotine, one of the most common stimulants in the world or history, they stimulate cortical activation and attentive waking, which is independent of movement. And drugs which block those receptors can prevent cortical activation without affecting movement. So these cholinergic neurons then are particularly involved in cortical activation, and by recording those, we have found that they discharge with cortical activation, not just with waking, but also during paradoxical sleep or REM sleep. So there are multiple chemical neurotransmitters or modulators of the activating and behavioral arousal systems, as you see here, of all of which I cannot mention. I will just mention one other important one, which was discovered about 20 years ago, a neuropeptide called orexin or hypercretin. And it was discovered to be essential for the maintenance of wakefulness with muscle tone because it was found that it is absent, lacking, first found experimentally, but then discovered in humans, in those having a disorder of narcolepsy, falling asleep, with cataplexy, which literally means falling down. And this is a disorder which my colleagues may refer to in their talks when humans can actually go directly from a state of active waking, lose muscle tone, and fall to the ground into a state which can resemble, in some ways, paradoxical or REM sleep. And those neurons also discharge like noradrenaline neurons only during waking, and they're off during sleep. So for paradoxical or REM sleep, which has cortical activation without behavioral arousal and with muscle tone, we know that cholinergic neurons discharge to stimulate the cortical activation, whereas the orexin and noradrenaline neurons are off. They are off because they are absent in the case of pathological cases of narcolepsy with cataplexy, the orexin neurons, or they're off during sleep because they've been inhibited and they've been off during slow-wave sleep. Now that inhibition of those arousal systems occurs during sleep, and what chemical is involved in producing that inhibition is the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA. It is located in many neurons in the brain, but in this case in particular neurons which inhibit the neurons of the arousal systems. So there are local GABAergic neurons which inhibit the noradrenergic neurons, which inhibit the orexin neurons, and as such they decrease waking and arousal and allow sleep to occur in the cortex. This proceeds and subsequently then into paradoxical sleep where cholinergic neurons reactivate for the cortex and other specific GABAergic neurons are involved in inhibiting the muscle tone. So it is not surprising that most anesthetics and sedatives as well as the hypnotics which are prescribed for insomnia that my colleague will refer to act by enhancing GABAergic transmission. We have recorded from different GABAergic neurons in the brain, and they are, there are some which are active during slow wave sleep, and there are others which are active also or uniquely during paradoxical sleep. They are fundamentally involved in, in, on the one hand, inhibiting arousal systems and allowing this muscle atonia that occurs in that paradoxical state of REM sleep. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.
So, um, if I understand, an individual would have rapid eye movements during sleep, but not muscle atonia. And that is a special disorder, and uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Dong Vu, may refer to that, but that is a disorder which is called REM sleep behavior disorder, where the mechanisms of motor inhibition that I have described are deficient because of degeneration that occurs in, amongst other things, probably GABAergic neurons in the brain that normally affect that motor inhibition. And so without that, this was first observed in cats, experimentally, and then only in the 80s, uh, described in humans, that you have people who act out their dreams so that the movements in their dreams are actually uh, expressed in movements which are no longer inhibited because of uh, the <clears throat> thought to be lesions that occur within the brain. I'm sorry. Gabaergic neurons are very much involved, and treatment can involve uh, acting upon Gabaergic systems. <laughs>